when you are transacting curricula or when you want to prepare a curricula you should keep in a mind in mind that there are certain principles based on which curriculum is constructed principle of we follow different approaches of organization of cur curriculum sometimes what we do we follow topical approach on performance see they might have scored 80% and above also but they are in last 20 uh, 10% we are calling non performer this is a relative grade primary, this upper primary then middle school then secondary school uh, then high school then secondary school and finally uh, graduation or university education now the curriculum has entirely changed uh, similarly technology can check you at step by step so formative assessment is going to be there adaptive assessment those who can give uh, the responses fast or answer quickly the machine can adapt uh, to his responses and give him quick questions and plenty of questions also so adapt So, uh, our resource person of uh, this particular session, uh, Professor Mushtaq Ahmed uh, Patel sir, has already joined us. So, let us first see that what exactly is the profile of sir. Uh, I'm going to formally introduce uh, Professor Patel. Sir is currently a professor of education at the Directorate of Distance Education, PTE Morana Azad National Uttar University, Hyderabad. His expertise spans ICT in education, distance education, teacher education. And school education. Professor Patel has more than 25 years of teaching experience across various levels over 15 years of research experience. Professor Patel has served as Registrar, Dean at Central University of Karnataka, Dean of Student Welfare and also he has contributed a lot uh, including a UGC funded major project on computer assisted instruction and extensive publications in national and international journals. He has authored and co-authored books and chapters on ICT in education and developed numerous audio-video educational practices. His active participation in academic committees such as Board of Studies and DRC at Manu and other universities like the University of Hyderabad, Usmania University and the University of Karnataka showcase his commitment to academic excellence. Professor Patel is also a life member and office bearer of several professional organizations including IAT, IDEA, and AIAER. He led the implementation of the Samarth e-governance platform at Manu. In recognition of his outstanding contributions, Professor Patel has received several awards, including the National Professor Award by Komi Urdu Shikshak Karnchari Sang in 2023. We welcome you, sir. And the session which sir is going to take today is going to base on uh, the theme on curriculum pedagogy and assessment. So it's a privilege for us to listen to you. Welcome again and uh, we hope that the session is going to be very constructive and very informative for all the participants. So it's all yours now. Thank you ma'am. I hope I am audible to everybody. Yes sir, you are audible. Uh, my video will not be visible on this screen. Uh, I have another device connected to this. Probably uh, if you want to see me, uh, you can see uh, my video on that device. Uh, this uh, device I am going to uh, speak and I am going to show my presentations. Uh, today's <coughs> discussion surrounds curriculum, pedagogy and evaluation as assigned by the HRDC or MMTTC. Uh, as you know, curriculum is core. Based on the curriculum, whatever curriculum says or prescribes, based on that we arrange our pedagogy. We will look into curriculum, pedagogy and whatever we teach based on that evaluation will be done. I will be going slightly 
fast because lot of content has to be covered i how i have divided my presentation is i am going to speak about the curriculum and after curriculum i am going to talk about pedagogy pedagogy then i am going to talk about evaluation and finally i'll be concluding with national education policy as uh, suggested by the organizers in curriculum i'll give you a brief definition i'll compare curriculum versus syllabus i will talk about how syllabus and textbook are different why textbook why not textbook or what more than textbook curriculum reforms whether there is essentiality if you want to uh, develop a curriculum what should be the principles what should be the approaches what are the core elements of a curriculum um, what mechanism is adopted at the university level what co curricular activities are and how the curricular activities are sequenced at various levels then i am going to brief you about pedagogy meaning of pedagogy what is the length and breadth of pedagogy what are the different learning styles teaching techniques or learning experiences i am going to talk about then i will touch upon evaluation i have synonymously used as assessment also but assessment is super superficial measurement whereas evaluation is keeping a value to that for today's presentation i am synonymously using assessment and evaluation meaning of assessment or evaluation stage specific how we have to do evaluation what are the different types of evaluation i have categorized into various categories then how integration has to be done with pedagogy and curriculum i am going to talk about absolute and relative relative gradings then assessment uh, of learning uh, for learning assessment as learning i am going to uh, di uh, differentiate national education policy i'll give you a brief curriculum framework key features of nep values and ideals uh, which are behind the nep guiding principles which the nep follows methods of teaching which nep has suggested curriculum at elementary middle secondary uh, higher education types of assessment and finally i'll conclude with parak lot of content as you see on the first slide uh, i'll go to without further delay i'll go to curriculum uh, brett camp and rose uh, rose grant say that curriculum is an organized framework it's a framework that delineates or gives the content that children are to learn what children have to learn that fr uh, framework is given by the curriculum the process through which children achieve the identified curricular goals whatever goals have been identified th those have to be achieved by the children what teachers do to help children achieve these goals means teaching strategies and the context in which teaching learning occurs curriculum has content curriculum has a context curriculum has certain goals to be achieved this is what curriculum is covering curriculum has been defined by many in different ways so uh, a few definitions i am going to discuss all the learning uh, learning which is planned and guided by the school curriculum is the teaching learning which is guided by the school at home also student learn that is not part of the curriculum whether it is school is guiding but whether it is carried on in groups or individually in classroom groups will be there a, a student will be learning individually also they will be learning inside or outside the school that parts all these things become part of the curriculum the total learning experience provided by a school it includes the content of course courses like syllabus the methods employed strategies which teacher adopt and other aspects like norms and values uh, which relate to the ways the school is organized that is curriculum a beautiful definition given by cunningham i am 
uh, giving just have a look of this picture curriculum is a tool in the hands of an artist to mold his pupil uh, to mold his material according to his ideals aims and objectives in his studio here an artist is giving a shape to an idol or a picture he is giving shape using his tool so that is what it is curriculum Curri uh, using curriculum this teacher is giving shape to his product and the other definition uh, which is given is curriculum crow and crow there are many definitions i have extracted few for, to discuss today the curriculum includes all the learners experiences in or outside the school these are the experiences which students are getting outside the classroom but within the school the, they also learn few things outside the school also that are included in a program which has been devised to help uh, child uh, development emotional developmentally emotionally socially spiritually and morally all these dimensions grow so this is what curriculum helps to brief curriculum is a rule book rule book what to do what not to do say for example if you draw a drive a vehicle you are given some information what to do what not to do rule book that is what curriculum is giving for a teacher suppose if curriculum is uh, uh, reframed or revised who all are affected teachers get affected students get affected parents get affected teachers they have to readjust with the new curriculum they have to learn new things new ways of teaching new ways of evaluation students they have to get familiarized with new subjects suppose if new branch of learning starts when we were learning computer science came as a new branch so students had to learn what computer science is how they have to learn so uh, they have to familiarize parents if curriculum is reformed naturally it will cost you in the form of books purchase of books or materials parents have to spend money to purchase books there are uh, i am going to compare most of us synonymously used curriculum and syllabus uh, when we ask somebody what is the curriculum of teaching they list out the syllabus syllabus and cu curriculum are not uh, synonymous but they, they are different different in meaning because curriculum contains overall content so many parts of syllabus become one content one curriculum Let's say for example primary school curriculum secondary school curriculum higher education curriculum so curriculum is uh, put a, a whole of uh, parts and whereas uh, syllabus is portion of the concepts small portion origin how it has started curriculum it is started with a latin word which means curare a course a race course where the horse runs to reach his destination this is latin word curare from that curriculum has started and the syllabus has started with city boss uh, it is a greek word uh, which means leather parchment or label that is city bus a uh, syllabus has is modified version of city bus set of set for a level program of course i as i told you it is primary school curriculum secondary school curriculum higher education curriculum whereas syllabus is for a particular subject let's say for example if you are teaching science science syllabus mathematics syllabus of fourth standard fifth standard 10th standard or optics uh, syllabus so uh, it is curriculum uh, is prescriptive it tells you teach all these things prescribes whereas syllabus describes this is subject this is unit 1 this is unit 2 unit 3 and finally you give these practical activities these experiments you give and yeah, you have to teach all these things in uh, so many hours so it describes this is prescriptive this is descriptive scope curriculum has got wider scope it cannot be attained in small duration whereas syllabus can be attained within one term uh, curriculum is set by the government 
whereas syllabus is set by the examining body say for example if university is the examining body university sets the uh, syllabus if uh, board is uh, examination board of your state uh, uh, gives syllabus then uh, they can examine after 10th class uh, similarly term uh, last uh, see uh, term is till the completion of a particular level till you complete primary level secondary level or tertiary level till that curriculum lasts whereas syllabus gets completed after completion of a uh, semester or a year curriculum is uniform across the nation for all the teachers whereas syllabus changes from state to state uh, maybe university to university also textbook there are most of us say that there is a curriculum based on curriculum syllabus is formed and based on syllabus textbook is formed so we say that textbook is nothing but the curriculum no textbook earlier used to dominate our teaching learning process there were very few learning materials scarcity of material was there only we were depending on textbooks learning environment was not very huge a very uh, small classroom and teacher and student and the textbook and they have to learn from the textbook that was the si uh, situation and uh, that uh, uh, that was the only solution for all problems if teacher doesn't understand he has to look into the textbook student doesn't understand he has to look into the te textbook single solution for all the problems and uh, then uh, it was sim uh, symbol of authority whatever is given in the textbook used to be final now see the situation has changed new perspective saying only textbook is not required there are plenty of teaching learning materials you can refer to uh, resource material you can refer to audio video program you can go to youtube you can go to khan academy there are plenty of things teacher is autonomous to select either from the textbook or any other material new perspective concrete concepts forming uh, objects uh, it forms concrete uh, uh, concept of various aspects one of the tool it is not the only tool uh, uh, interact with the environment see uh, the new textbook perspective says that it is not that the student should be dependent on the textbook but a facility should be made so that the child should interact with uh, his peers other teachers or anybody uh, function this textbook helps as a guide uh, to understand various concepts and what we were thinking that textbook is a finished product now it is not a free finished product it helps us to generate ideas uh, interact with the people and learn new things it is not uh, no more a final idea when we look at what curriculum is being transacted in school we see that language mathematics science history are some of the uh, subjects which are being transacted language helps us to uh, as a tool for communicating uh, knowledge what we learn we communicate mathematics is a tool for uncovering knowledge we solve the problems science is a knowledge of physical world what is around us we learn through science all these subjects help us to develop general principles of how the world works whereas history gives us knowledge of the human world uh, we learn about our ancestors large collection of past occurrences are given this is general realm of knowledge which is being taught in uh, schools uh, uh, most of the time we see that curriculum change hop happens or reforms takes place why reform uh, why reform what is the use who gives us feedback see we have set our goals if we change goals change the curriculum uh, need uh, these goals are based on various needs societal needs uh, disciplinary needs etc organization of instructions based on school free pedagogy if uh, you are giving school free pedagogy say for example shanti niketan may have their own uh, vishwa bharti may have 
their own curriculum because they love, keep the students free uh, the student has to learn in the nature learning in the school context that also uh, helps you to formulate the curriculum evaluation based on predetermined goals so these are the things based on which curriculum is reformed when you are transacting curriculum or when you want to prepare a curriculum you should keep in a mind in mind that there are certain principles based on which curriculum is constructed principle of harmony principle of harmony of society harmony of subjects the people living together uh, in harmony is very much important and your curriculum should reflect that principle of activity centeredness the activity should become center of attention and similarly i have written a principle of child centeredness whose activity one is activity like constructivist approach what we are talking nowadays the student is constructing his own knowledge based on his own ideas or perceptions so how he does is by activity the child also does the work democratic values see say for example in autocratic countries like uh, for example in north korea uh, the curriculum prescribed there and the curriculum uh, which is available in india is going to differ because we have got democratic values principle of utility the curriculum which is being taught in the schools should be used full useful outside in outside life the principle of creativity principle of creativity says that there should be provision for a student to show his creativity there should be provision for teacher to show his creativity creativity in the form of teaching learning or evaluation principle of preservation of culture nep is also emphasizing that indian culture has to be preserved so our curriculum goes on the goals which we set principles of child centeredness i have discussed principle of integration some content of mathematics is integrated with physics some content of physics has got integration with chemistry some science subject has got some common topics with social science what child learn in primary uh, should be integrated in the high school there is integration uh, principle of totality of experiences the experiences gained by a child should be uh, having a totality of experience not the it is not that we are developing only cognitive aspects we have to develop cognitive emotional social physical all round development has to be made so the principle say uh, the uh, principle which guides us to construct curriculum is principle of totality of experience principle of variety variety should be there not monotonous way of teaching variety of examples variety of content variety of uh, students who follow so everything it should be having flexibility should be there in the curriculum what can uh, could not be attained this uh, a particular instance can be attained after some time flexibility should be there um, we follow different approaches of organization of cur curriculum sometimes what we do we uh, follow topical approach one topic is taken and that is taught in a particular class complete gone though there is no need to uh deal with that topic in higher classes or later classes that is topical approach spiral approach spiral approach means we are continuously going uh, around the topic and uh, touching it continuously as the child grows further it is interrelated interweaving uh, continuously uh, uh, there is slight touch in science slight touch in mathematics same topic is dealt in uh, social science etc continuously it is being taught concentric concentric means at the center place there is a particular theme which is being based on that particular theme the uh, con uh, construction of knowledge is being made say for example i am uh, given an example here say for example energy is being taught in 600 in 7th they are taught types of energy in 8th class they are taught laws of conservation of energy then ninth class laws derivation and numerical numerical uh, numericals on energy that is being taught 
so you see the approach how we are approaching curriculum uh, there are different ways of approaching integrated correlation between uh, different subjects for example solar system or uh, solar system is being taught in science solar system can be taught in geography or social science or it can be ta uh, taught as a language also so there is integration integrated approach there, there are few elements which are core for developing a curriculum uh, what i have listed is goals aims outcome statement and objectives uh, to uh, summarize goals goals are uh, key elements to develop curriculum content subject matter or syllabus to uh, to precise to be precise it is content which is core element for construction of a curriculum methods procedures process or pedagogy pedagogy uh, is core element for uh, developing a curriculum assessment and evaluation or evaluation is core uh, core for uh, construct, uh, constructing a curriculum see goals what you set goals based on that content is developed what content is available based on that you do, do teaching uh, or pedagogy what you have taught you are going to assess based on your assessment goals will be uh, checked whether verify whether it is achieved or not similarly goals help you to develop pedagogy pedagogy help uh, you to reassign goals assessment helps you to know what content has been achieved uh, content decides if some experiments are there you cannot ask theoretical questions you have to ask some questions which can be shown practically so content uh, tells you what kind of evaluation or assessment has to be done uh, these are expert uh, excerpts from the curriculum uh, in 9 uh, 1986 policy new policy of education i am skipping uh, because of paucity of time it will take lot of time uh, mechanics of curriculum development at university most of you are doing your higher education program at this level i suppose that most of you are teachers of the university you may be wondering why we are talking about primary secondary or tertiary school level as at the university level also there is a the procedure which is followed for curriculum construction say for example a subject teacher feels that this curriculum is outdated he has to modify then he uh, formulates the course he takes the material to board of studies board of studies examine the uh, form and substance of the course developed by the teacher it is then presented to the school of uh, school uh, concerned school maybe school of science maybe school of education or any faculty uh, then faculty or school examines the relevance and placement of the course in interdisciplinary one school may have say for example school of languages may have urdu department english department hindi or any other department so they will look uh, the interdisciplinary perspective whether the curriculum proposed proposed by teacher is suitable or not and at the academic council level also uh, since it is a policy uh, implement uh, making body so they look what are the goals of our university whether this curriculum proposed by teacher is useful for our university so they also look and then does the curriculum is uh, devised uh, when we talking about curricular activities kindly remember that curricular activities are not limited only to the classroom activities the curricular activities have to be extended with co curricular activities earlier we used to call extra curricular activities we used to think that this is beyond the curriculum say for example if you are teaching history you take the children to uh, excursion or you do a drama civics if you are teach, uh, teaching you take them to panchayat or show them the election how self governance is uh, working or do a mock parliament in the school these are used to be we used to think that these are extra curricular no need to do in the classroom but these are not extra curricular these are co curricular 
along with the theoretical aspects what you are teaching these kind of activities have to be done some of the examples i have given in this slide how curriculum is determined what are the factors see what, what is philosophy based on the philosophy curriculum is decided based on the psychology whom we are teaching based on that their level what is being taught at primary level cannot be ta taught at the university level because the student psyche differs at both the levels your curriculum is going to be dependent on that how you your society what is good for your society based on that your curriculum will be decided i gave an example of a democratic society as well as autocratic society based on that curriculum is going to be decided individual learners how quickly how well they respond what is their level based on that curriculum is decided what your nation wants to achieve based on that curriculum is decided so these are some of the factors based on which curriculum is decided curriculum when we talk of we categorize it into different levels one is a curriculum at the society level society level highest level or national level the least one is the curriculum at the instructional level or teachers level there is an institutional level uh, curriculum also when we talk of a of teacher or a classroom it becomes a narrower meaning when we talk of the society or the nation it becomes broader uh, level so the curriculum can be looked from this perspective also where it is being implemented who is going to decide who is implementing it based on that we can say that it is a narrower or broader type as you know the there is a hierarchy of curriculum the uh, students go through pre uh, primary pre primary schools primary school secondary school and then finally higher education these are the different levels as i was narrating earlier the curriculum will be dependent on the level to which you are dealing there is pre primary level uh, pre schooling is there elementary schooling is there secondary schooling is there higher education is there so curriculum is designed based on the level which uh, level you are teaching say for example elementary level we teach language mathematics then art of healthy and productive life environmental uh, studies or science curriculum uh, classes 1 and 2 may have three uh, aspect of it classes 3 to 5 may have all the four aspects so curriculum differs from level to level here yeah, for example if, when we talk about uh, high school for say for example mother ten is being taught second language is uh, being taught english is being given then sanskrit is being taught uh, then social science is being taught mathematics science technology art education health and physical education work education all these put together can become upper primary level national curriculum uh, when i this is the first part of my Uh, area which i am covering let us go to pedagogy teaching learning methods and classroom practices uh, pedagogy the word pedagogy is derived from pedagogos pedos means child pediatrics you take your children to pediatrics so pedago uh, pedos means child agogos means leader the uh, pedagogy means to lead a child a teacher is not leading them for a march a teacher is leading them in their classes to impart knowledge so pedagogy whatever teacher does whether teaching or preparation of material use of audio video material everything becomes a, a teachers activity which is pedagogy pedagogy uh, uh, involves teaching media teaching media the charts are used then blackboard is used whiteboard is used printouts are given textbook is used that is media right assessment is being done by the teacher that is part of pedagogy engaging students so, uh, teacher engages students teachers become facilitator facilitator based on the needs styles uh, of the students use techniques that suits students level how you are teaching in a school you cannot adopt the same methodology 
uh, at the higher uh, education you have to change that learning styles this is quite interesting when i uh, talk to you uh, learners differ so teaching also differs pedagogy has to change based on the learners style say for example uh, there are some learners who learn based uh, whose style of learning is visual learning style there are few students who have got auditory learning styles there are few learners who uh, use tactile kinesthetic learning style so, uh, what are the characteristics of uh, children who are learning through visuals they prefer pictures rather than words if you tell a story they may not like you show them the picture they like uh, they are keen observers continuously they see and identify the differences have a good spatial sense a spatial sense since it, it is because, uh, based on visuals so how uh, if circle and oval are given they can differentiate both of them because they have got spatial knowledge and keen observation they depend on reading writing and drawing if you have got a class or students who are visually learning then use colorful visuals charts photos etc your your class becomes effective pedagogy differs based on your learners you can include demonstration or visit for say for example visit of a factory can be made because your people pupil or students want to learn by visuals children would like to look at the book and learn so give them books give them uh, stories reading books well, they will start learning say for example audit auditory learning for example if i tell you that you have you are teaching to a class of students who are blind who are visually impaired what do you, uh, what do they do they listen uh, they listen and learn they want words to express they cannot we uh, uh, show you visuals but they can tell their ideas in words they are uh, they follow verbal instructions properly because they cannot see so uh, there are few students based on their demands you can uh, you should know what are their characteristics so that you can adapt your teaching accordingly they uh, some of the students i have given example of blind students it is not that blind only blind students are auditory most of us also uh, murmur the things we repeat the words what we want to do means talk to ourselves uh, then only learning happens so for such students you can play music and rhymes you can arrange discussion and storytelling or oral expression presentations you can ask them to read aloud or you can ask one of the students in the class to read aloud so that those students who want to hear and learn can uh, learn group uh, or peer learning happens you can group them one uh, person will explain another another will hear so auditory learning style is there you adapt your teaching accordingly there are few students who are tactile kinesthetic learning uh, learn, they learn by hands on experience they do and learn uh, scientifically and psychologically also we believe that hands on experience is the best way of learning physically active some students are physically active they make gestures to present so you might have seen some teachers are presenting their content without gestures some uh, show their gestures facial gestures or movements to give their ideas so if the students are of that sort then you have to give them opportunity to handle objects and explore you can uh, give them freedom to walk around in the classroom children can move dance and get involved in the classroom you discipline does not means keeping quiet in the classroom as per their requirement you can allow them to change uh, there are different teaching methods which are uh, we use in our day to day uh, uh, day to day teaching or pedagogy one is a lecture method which i am using now discussion method is there if we are face to face then we can discuss upon the issues or if you are teaching science you can demonstrate 
if you want the student to learn himself you can allow him to discover uh, where discovery uh, if he is doing he is put into new situation all the hardship with scientists have gone he will also go through assignment or project can be given for group of people they can learn field trip can be used as excursion they can go and learn uh, say for example if they want to go uh, to zoo take them to zoo and allow them to examine and write <clears throat> individualized instruction method like computer aided instruction you give one computer or device to one student ask him to learn laboratory method uh, sciences we use this method inductive method from examples to generalization and from generalization to uh, examples is the deductive method which we use open education method like shanti niketan peer teaching methods one, uh, groups are made one person who is good at a content will be teaching other uh, play way methods will also be utilized and role play methods these are few of the methods which i am indicating uh, based on your subject content area and level of teaching you can choose any method which is suitable uh, you may be good at lecture lecture can be also a good method of teaching the these were the methods which i discussed earlier were old methods of teaching now there are modern teaching methods or techniques also have come say for example flipped classroom flipped classroom is i in general classroom we teach in the classroom student go and do the homework at the home here what we do is we flip the role the student sees the video in the class uh, or in the home and comes and discusses about the video or content or knowledge in the classroom tactile learning i just spoke to you there are few, few people who touch and learn uh, touch and learn things uh, this is visual auditory and kinesthetic learning i spoke about those things project based learning you can give a project to find out what kind of people are there in a society uh, you, uh, you can make a census of a village and how they stay where are their houses project can be given problem based learning give a problem to them and ask them to solve say for example a overhead tank uh, is getting overflown so how to stop automatically the machine so that may be a problem can be given as the students will learn collaborative learning instead of learning individually alone they can collaborate say for example wikipedia we collaborate our ideas with other people whom we know of whom we do not know cooperative learning in a group we cooperate game based learning we learn through games now plenty of games have come inquiry based learning the student becomes inquirer inquisitive he asks question to the uh, situation thinking based learning he thinks uh, and learn uh, then competency based learning independent learning these are few of the modern teaching techniques i am going to third stage this is assessment and evaluation this is all, as i told you uh, assessment and evaluation are two different terms but i am using simultaneously here assessment is assessing uh, simply assessing and saying uh, he is good or he is bad giving valuation uh, makes its evaluation assessment is uh, planned by government regulates assessment process in india uh, the assessment is regulated by the government who is going to be evaluated uh the teacher is going to be evaluated or the student is going to be evaluated what will be evaluated whether you are going to evaluate the content whether you are going to evaluate his presentation and how evaluation is to be done uh, you are going to observe and evaluate or you are going to read his paper and evaluate or his you are going to read project and evaluate so how you are going to do that assessment practices include assessment includes a uh, student uh, we evaluate student we evaluate entire education system whether our education is good or education system is good or uh, it has to be improved that is how national education policy 2020 has also emerged we find that there are changes to be made ours is a 
old policy, lot of changes are taking place. The process of implementation of goals of education, whether we, uh, we are going properly uh, in implementation of goals of education or not, that can also be evaluated. Teachers preparation. See, we found that one year beard was be, uh, being implemented earlier. We found that a lot of changes are taking place in teaching, learning and evaluation. Lot of content improvisation is happening. So one year beard is not suitable. Two year beard has come. And two year beard also, we find that two year beard, we are only teaching them pedagogy, how to teach, how to evaluate. We are not teaching them content. So content should also be integrated. Four year teacher education programs have come. So uh, we do assessment not only of students, not only of teachers, no, uh, of the entire process also. The execution of learning process, how learning is happening. So we see. And uh, evaluation of education, how evaluation is taking place, that also we assess. Assessment of students achievement. Assessment of uh, students achievement includes examination plus academic uh, skills. Commitment, self-management and parental support. Students have different skills. Some uh, have got good speaking skills. Some have got good writing skills. Your assessment should be dependent on that. Holistic approach. Holistic approach tells that you should not give only uh, uh, assess only cognitive aspect. With the assessment should ha help uh, students to maintain the performance over the years. Continuously what students are performing, it should uh, be maintained and the progress has to be made. When we talk of assessment, assessment uh, when we are talking, assessment for learning, assessment for learning. Uh, if you want to learn something for that assessment uh, is helpful. Means learning needs, what are the learning needs that can be assessed. So, assessment of learning, whatever you are taught in the classroom, what student want to learn is also assessed. What student is learning in the classroom can also be assessed and it becomes evidence of learning, what he has learned. You can assess uh, assessment as a learning. As the student is going for, further, today you are taught something, you are assessing. Tomorrow you are taught something and you are assessing and you are changing the strategy and assessing. So learns, learner reflects their learning. What I was yesterday, what I am today, what I am going to be tomorrow. So uh, student, it helps the student to learn and reflect his learning. Uh, when uh, assessment is seen from the level perspective, assessment ha, uh, at different stages will be different. Say for example, at primary level, when I am talking about class 1 and 2, you give children's activities uh, in various domains and assess their status, their health, physical development, based on observation and uh, through everyday interaction. Here, student will not be able to tell uh, how is his health, how much height he is increased, how much weight has increased, whether he is physically sound or not. Student will not be able to do. That, their, the assessment is, teacher has got a checklist, he ticks, he observes and ticks. Here, we, it is not important how much content is learnt, how physically he is growing, how much growth and development is happening, that has to be seen. So this assessment and the assessment at university level is going to be different. Now, you see that when we talk about class 3 and 4, we talked about class 1 and 2 where students are not... Yes, please. <clears throat> when we talk about class 3 and 4, we see that oral examination, whatever it is, a teacher is teaching, uh, he or she can ask oral examination, he can give written observation or test. Child must be aware of being assessed. Here child gets aware that he is being assessed. Grades and marks are given. Uh, quality judgments are made. Student can self-evaluate. Uh, class 5 onwards, he starts evaluating how much he has done. Term-wise examination can be conducted. 
progress reports can be prepared so you see how you are assessing at this level and how you are assessing at this level is going to be different there are different uh, types of assessment one is called norm reference assessment norm means there is a overall group uh, behavior to that group behavior you are checking how good is your student say for example 10th examination result comes for the entire group result you compare your students <clears throat> how good he is or or how not good he is criterion reference assessment criterion reference assessment say for example if you, you feel that your class student should be able to solve quadratic equation if he has to solve the quadratic equation then you must make provision that he uh, learns quadratic equation and if five questions are given five all five uh, quadratic equation he can solve standard based uh, assessment for fifth standard one type of assessment will be there for 10th uh, standard one type of assessment will be there that is another type of assessment or standard based assessment which is followed standardized test standardized test means that there are few psychological tests for example intelligence questions and question tests those are standardized tests uh, there are uh, the result of which have been compared earlier by psychologist based on that standard your student result will be compared and you will categorize at average below average or above average or gifted so standardized test help us traditional assessment we have been using uh, written examination oral examination test quizzes essays these are old methods of assessments alternative assessments are project presentation portfolio assessment creativity we can assess performance based assessment test knowledge in the real world for example you give a project i told you uh, water flowing from the tank or erupting out of the tank so that is a real world problem you give them and they will try to uh, make a presentation by doing a project performance based uh, assessment portfolio portfolio over the period of time the child will be developing he will be uh, writing examination he will be doing projects say for example your employee if you see today he has done some work tomorrow he has done some work and those things get added to his portfolio at the end of the year you can see how much progress has been made so in uh, this indicates the growth holistic uh, this is the overall overall holistic approach formative assessment as i told you formative assessment is nothing but the assessment uh, which is ongoing today we have taught something we will assess them orally tomorrow or after completion of a unit we give them a written test we uh, give them some project so continuously it is ongoing process uh, what happens here is a teacher can identify where the students are doing good or where they are not going doing good so based on that his teaching strategy can be modified summative assessment says that at the end of the unit you can take a test or at the end of a semester or end of the year you can take a, a test so this gives whole uh, year's performance but where are the weak areas that cannot be known but overall how student is performing that can be ascertained reliability reliability means consistency of measurement and assessment in uh, similar conditions say for example uh, if a test is given uh, uh, say for example if a projective ink blot test is given uh, ink uh, drop is made and the paper is folded uh, it is open then uh, whatever is in the mind of the student he will project he will say that this is a dog this is a cloud this is a factory etc so reliability you ask for a, uh, to anybody based on their visual uh, mental makeup they will give so uh, there is consistent measurement wherever you do validity is whatever the test has to measure it will measure that is validity 
uh, I have got uh, uh, identified some uh, relationship between curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment. Curriculum uh, is nothing but what do I want my students to learn? What do I want my students to learn? What we have to teach that is decided by the curriculum. The official grade level uh, curriculum is the first thing to establish. However, and wherever this is expressed, in and the teacher's goal is to link to that suddenly uh, you know, the, what students already know, what they are knowing, and what you are going, uh, what they uh, have to be taught. That has to be uh, uh, that has to be uh, given. So that is why curriculum is there. Pedagogy. Pedagogical aspect says that who are my students? Who are my students? Curriculum is known. Who are my students is known. Who are my students means what? Their background, family, friends, their understanding, their aspiration, interest, uh, out of class activity, what they are doing. I have come across many studies where uh, children from slum areas are taken for studies how the good family students go to home and they study, they have got time to study, the slum area children do not have, uh, do not have time to study. So whatever the classroom teacher is teaching today, tomorrow they are coming again blank without any knowledge what the teacher has taught. So pedagogy is dependent on who are uh, your students. Assessment, assessment, how will I know what students have learned. We are transacting certain curriculum uh, content using our pedagogy. How much they have learned? Teachers need to think of multiple ways of assessing. It is not that only written test has to be given. It is not that only oral test has to be given. It is not only the quizzes have to be given. How teachers can provide feedback? Feedback uh, during the teaching you are going to do or on completion of a specific task or monitor over a period and at the end you are going to do. So this is how there is a connection between these two, uh, three. Uh, there is, uh, nowadays we are using grading patterns. Grading patterns, uh, say for example, if somebody scores above 60%, we give them a grade, uh, we call he is above average. We give uh, if they score thirty percent or sixty percent, they give uh, we give a B grade or average. Similarly, this is a three point uh, scale which is followed. We have got similarly five point scale which ranges from uh, grade E to uh, grade A. This is very unsatisfactory or poor. This is excellent or distinction is there. Similarly, nine point uh, scale is also there. Uh, we start, it depends on the university where you are teaching and how they are adapting. Uh, I to A, uh, 20, below 20% 20 marks to 90% and above, unsatisfactory to outstanding. This is absolute grading. If any score is lying, say for example, if somebody has scored 56, 56 uh, in three point scale, where do we place 56? Uh, we place 30 to 60. That is, he becomes uh, average student. Here, we see that in this, he is coming in second division or average category. Here, in this group, when we are looking at here, here also, this score is falling in average category. Based on your percentage, we you uh, give him a grade. Similarly, you see there is a relative grading. Relative grading is also there. You uh, say, for example, if you have got uh, 100 students in your class, okay, I am giving a hypoth uh, hypothetical situation. If 100 students are there, then we say that 10% we will call non performance and 20% we call them as uh, top performance and remaining 70 we are going to call an uh, uh, average performance. So out of 100, whosoever is topping, 20% we are going to call them top performance. At least they are going to be called as non-performance. See, they might have scored 80% and above also, but they are 
in last 20 uh, 10 percent we are calling non performer this is a relative grading this is another way of grading uh, how good how bad what are the advantages what are the disadvantages that has to be seen so finally i am going to touch upon national education policy 2020 see uh, this policy since this workshop uh, is specifically with regard to national education policy i need to uh, uh, deliberate upon this also. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you following? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, did I cover uh, what is that curriculum, pedagogy, and evaluation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, uh, when we talk in yes, general classroom, we take uh, hours together to speak all these aspects. Um, looking at nature of your group and the time uh, under which you have to understand the concepts, I am going a uh, bit uh, in hurry. Hope you are following. Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. National education policy. Uh, this was talk of the town few years ago. That earlier we were having primary schooling. Then we had uh, lower primary, uh, primary and primary also lower primary, upper primary, then middle school, then secondary school, uh, then high school, then secondary school, and finally. Uh, graduation or university education now the curriculum has entirely changed and uh, the new educa national education policy 2020 uh, has made uh, following four categories of school education first stage is foundational stage which is from age 3 to 8 earlier 3 to 6 uh, uh, they were not covering now 3 to 6 also will be covered along with 7 and 8 years. This is age of a child. Here this means, see here you are seeing that uh, in this group, this area was not covered earlier. We were talking of education from 6 years to 16 years and plus 2 years were also taken here. Total 18 years of education was given. Now. National education policy is saying that foundational school must cover uh, pre-primary schooling also, which was not covered earlier. This covers pre-primary schooling as well as first and second standard. All put together it is called foundational stage. Now name has changed. No more calling of primary or upper primary. Now it is foundational stage three uh, from age 3 to 8 which covers pre-primary schooling as well as two classes of primary schooling, first standard and second standard. Preparatory stage. Preparatory stage covers ages, age groups from 8 to 11, where foundational stage has left from their preparatory stage uh, starts. Still, these, uh, nomen this nomenclature is yet to be adopted by all of us. The more we speak, the more we talk, and the more it is implemented, will become familiar. Preparatory stage. Preparatory stage uh, covers grade 3 to 5. Uh, here, only still second standard it was covered. Now, 3 to 5, we are going to have preparatory stage. After preparatory stage, we are going to have a middle stage. Middle stage covers grades from 6 to 8 from 6th standard to 8th standard. Age group is 11 years and to 14 years. Age appropriate schooling also you might have heard. If the child is coming to school, say for example 11 years, he has to be put in this middle stage, irrespective of preparatory and foundational stage. But it is, there is a continuous uh, flow of uh, schooling uh, because content is being connected with each other. Earlier, I have told you how the curriculum is designed. This curriculum, which is designed for foundational stage, 
will lead to preparatory stage preparatory stage curriculum leads to middle stage and the teaching methodology also depends on the stage at which you are teaching uh, foundational stage preparatory stage middle stage and secondary stage secondary stage or senior secondary school we were calling 11th and 12th now no more 11th and 12th it is secondary stage is going to cover classes 9 to 12 all the classes four classes uh, here age group is 14 to 18 means here five years of foundational school then three years of preparatory school and uh, three years uh, 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 4, what is this? 8 plus 2. 2 years or 3 years of middle school, 9, 10, 11, 12, 4 years of. Uh, am I going wrong here? Yeah. How many years of foundational? 5 years, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, uh, 8, 11, 15. Okay, so this is how the national curriculum uh, framework says. Uh, why there was a need for adopting this? When you look at your children probably, we also see that they have heavy bags they are carrying. So there is a need to reduce curriculum and focus on core essential things. During Corona or COVID-19, lockdown we have reduced curriculum by 30 percent and taught only essential things that means only only essential things are necessary additional things need not be taught so core curriculum has to be given with critical thinking experiential learning uh, till now only rote learning were emphasized, uh, was emphasized the uh, student has to take all his bags all his books and learn remember now experiential learning which means hands-on learning arts sports and storytelling also should be given multilingualism uh, lingu uh, multi uh, earlier only one or two languages were taught now we want our children to learn multiple languages languages like home language uh, there is a local state language or there is a national or international language at least three languages have to be taught this, this is what national uh, curriculum uh, uh, NEP is saying vocational education at middle level at earlier level we are giving this exposure at middle level vocational exposure has to be given skills have to be developed in the students Asian essential skills and capabilities has to be uh, created like scientific temper, creativity, ethical reasoning, cultural awareness. Technology has to be integrated at all levels. It is not saying that you integrate technology at higher education or secondary education at all levels. Holistic development has to be there. That holistic development means cognitive, affective, psychomotor. All the domains, what we call uh, uh, different domains of learning are there. Uh, those have to be followed. Assessment reforms. Assessment was only based on the cognitive learning. Now assessment has to take a comprehensive way, uh, view, a competency based learning uh, evaluation has to be done. Need for curriculum reform. Why curriculum has to be reformed? Because there is a learning crisis. Whatever students are learning in the school, that is not uh, useful in their life. The rote learning is there. Rote learning you remember 101 things if you are not able to uh, uh, employ those things in your practical life it becomes useless because parrot also remembers whatever we tell but whether he knows the importance of that is to be thought so rote learning was there that is why uh, it has to be changed inadequate skill development our graduates are being developed but the company's requirements they are not able to meet so inadequate skill development is there that is why uh, the curriculum reform has to be there we our examination or teaching was dependent on only cognitive aspect now we are saying that uh, they are lacking holistic development so holistic development has to be there irrelevant content was also being taught uh, 
because uh, uh, say for example uh, financial management throughout our life we do uh, good relationships we have to keep with our family members are those being taught in the school curriculum no so such things also should be incorporated uh, assessment issues are there uh, so that is why curriculum reform has to be there then values and ideals values and ideals help us to frame our uh, uh, curriculum ethics and human and constitutional values have to be incorporated in our curriculum traditional indian values are also essential based on which curriculum has to be developed fundamental duties what our rights everybody talks of but what are our duties towards nation or what are our duties towards our neighbors what are our duties towards other communities we do not understand environmental awareness global warming is happening and a lot of countries will be submerged under water some people are not at all getting water for drinking these are the environmental issues uh, which have to be made aware uh, gender sensitization male female neutral gender etc there are different uh, types of genders we have to be made sensitized uh, we have to be sensitized regarding their requirement now india is not working independently i or in isolation india has relationship with other countries we you are sitting on a computer you are connected to the entire world global citizenship the individual has become a global citizen so those values or ideals also are to be incorporated in the learner that is why the there are few principles based on which national education policy has been framed flexibility so flexibility is the principle based on which the curriculum has to be framed so learners can choose their learning trajectories or program say for example you are doing one year program taking a gap and after working for one year you are coming and doing second year or you are doing one year in one uh, university and second year education you are going to for other university so flexibility is the need of uh, our uh, no hard separation between curricular and extra curricular activities there was lot of discussion on curricular aspects extra curricular we were not touching now we are this we say that occasional and academic stream should go together So, uh, one student who is doing a science program can also take arts uh, subject also streams combination multidisciplinary and holistic education so uh, science students social science students humanities sports students can take any stream emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than low rote learning concepts have to be understood by the learner creativity and critical thinking are to be encouraged Uh, creativity and critical thinking because logical decision making is going to be uh, useful a skill life skill such as communication cooperation team uh, work uh, resilience have to be taught this is the principle based on which curriculum has to be developed as per the national education policy uh, uh, synergy in the curriculum across all levels of education we have seen different levels of education uh, from child care, childhood care and uh, education to school education to higher education all these levels the curriculum should have a synergy uh, what is being taught in the high school is not at all connected with the uh, university level earlier this used to happen uh, the uh, nep says that there should be a synergy a rootedness in pride in india whatever we do uh, we have got very learned uh, community uh, in india and we have got a very uh, great uh, history of india we uh, the, our student should be pride uh, proud of uh, those things uh, teaching and learning methods what teaching and learning methods uh, it is talking i uh, remember 
I am looking national education policy from the perspective of curriculum, pedagogy and evaluation only. I am not looking national education policy from uh, teacher's perspective or teacher's training or science training or research or any uh, language uh, education. There are various dimensions available in the national education policy. For today's presentation, I am restricting myself only to curriculum, pedagogy and evaluation. Uh, under pedagogy, what uh, the uh, NEP is saying, play-based and activity-based learning has to be given at primary level. Inquiry-based and discovery-oriented learning has to be there. Discussion-based learning can be adopted at higher level. Experiential uh, learning can be given at middle school. A uh, holistic and multidisciplinary approach has to be followed. Technology-based learning has to be given at all levels. Formative assessment should become part of it. Uh, elementary level, uh, you see that it is uh, three years. Uh, as I said, these are the different activities which are to be followed uh, here. Uh, here, the curriculum may include alphabet, languages, learning, objects, etc. textbooks along with this light textbook has to be uh, integrated developing foundational literacy uh, they should be able to uh, read and write at third standard and uh, uh, then uh, re uh, reading speaking uh, physical till here oral was there observation was used play based activity was there and now here uh, formal classroom learning started here formal classroom learning was not there uh, when we talk of middle school, which is uh, three years from grade six to eight, focus is on previous stages. What uh, foundation education has said, foundation education, uh, three to eight and preparatory stage, uh, three to five grades. And middle stage uh, is six to eight years, 11 to 14 years. With, uh, this is based on the previous stages. There should be continuity. It introduces subject teachers and delves into more abstract concepts across subjects. Here, subject experts start coming. Till now, subject experts were not there. It includes curriculum like science, mathematics, arts, social science, which was not there earlier. Pedagogy, here experiential learning is important. Uh, encourages exploration relationship between different subjects. Science is related to uh, mathematics. All relationships starts coming. Secondary stage, which is 9, 14, year, 12 years, 4 years, it is multidisciplinary. Greater depth. Here, critical thinking of the students, uh, uh, critical thinking skill is developed. Curriculum uh, builds on subject-oriented approach of the middle stage. Whatever middle stage what we have taught, based on that, further we are going. Student can choose subjects across various uh, theme uh, streams. Like science students can select language or commerce aspects, including science, all these things. Exit option is there. After 10th, the child can take exit. Again, he can come for grades and 11 and 12. And higher education, a uh, brief uh, I will give you. Uh, higher education, uh, there you see how interesting it is. It can be three years degree or four years degree. Three years because already we are going three years. If uh, there is a three year degree, uh, uh, then one year PG will be there. Uh, sorry, if there is a four year degree, one year PG will be there. If there is a three year degree, then two year uh, PG will be there. If the, the student is, is coming after uh, 12, then he can go for a uh, five year degree. Then there is multiple entry and multiple exit option is there. He can take number of times admission or opt to go out of out also. So there is a three year program, there is a four year program, academic bank of credit. Academic bank of credit is also there. Uh, uh, say for example, part of the credits he is earning in face to face mode. Through MOOCs also he can uh, get some uh, credits, uh, credits and store in his academic bank. So uh, all put together, whichever university from which he has gathered more number of credits will be awarding degree. 
as you know the student if he has completed one year degree he will be given certificate if he has completed two years of the degree then he will be given a diploma after the completion of three years he can be given given up bachelor's degree or after four years he can given a research degree similarly uh, this uh, all these things a multidisciplinary approach has come he can offer anything flexibility of admission and choices are there credits can be accumulated focus on research and innovation integration of vocational uh, education and indian knowledge system uh, types of assessment see technology has come into play earlier only classroom test and assessment used to be there uh, similarly technology can check you at step by step so formative assessment is going to be there adaptive assessment those who can give uh, the responses fast or answer quickly the machine can adapt uh, to his responses and give him quick questions and plenty of questions also so adaptive assessment is possible competency based whatever competency is acquiring that can be tested competency uh, based assessment is possible 360 degrees holistic the progress card can be developed physical mental uh, cognitive affective psychomotor all domains so 360 degree holistic uh, progress card can be developed examinations will be there in grade p 5 and 8 uh, whereas the board examinations are going to be there uh, at uh, standard 10 or 12 this is according to national education policy uh, finally uh, before i close uh, this is last slide for me national assessment center is uh, is proposed to be established this is going to be called as parak uh, it is uh, working parak means performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development under ministry of education the objectives are they are going to set norms and standards and guidelines for students and evaluation for all recognized schools they are going to develop uh, they are going to guide the state uh, achievement surveys national uh, they are going to take national achievement surveys they are going to monitor achievement of the learning outcomes of the entire nation encourage the shift in assessment uh, pattern towards 21st century skills 21st century skill knowledge is everywhere which knowledge has to be gathered taken and how it has to be pursued uh, based on that 21st century skills uh, this will be tested parak will also advise school boards on new assessment patterns and research promote collaboration between board and ensure equivalence in academic standards across different boards thank you uh, this uh, was my final slide a uh, few minutes to go hope uh, you all uh, got what i was speaking uh, wish to know your uh, observations and uh, if possible i will uh, check whether i have i have recorded so that it can be put for public domain thank you madam eram ma'am thank you so much sir and uh, because there are a few minutes left so if any of the participants is willing to ask something uh, to sir uh, they can it was a wonderful talk sir i was listening to you on and off because i was taking a class uh, in at, at present so uh, not was not able to uh, to listen to the entire session but on and off i was listening to you it was wonderful so uh, is there any question thank you ma'am for the opportunity it was nice uh, interacting uh, at your mmtt is it for the first time i have been uh, interacting at university of hyderabad few times at manu bangalore university madurai and various other universities this was the first occasion i am a national resource person also i record my presentations and uh, give it to ugc also hopefully if this is recorded then i will share it with them also Great. This will be a wonderful thing. 
So uh, and Hi, uh, sir. yeah.